we gather to sing all his praises we gather to worship the king we gather to hear of his precious love his grace into all lives he Well, good morning, everyone. We're uh, uh, excited to be here today, and we're going to uh, look at a topic. Uh, the last two weeks, we've looked at grace and peace, and we're going to look at Luke chapter 18 today, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. That'll be our text, and we're going to look at another thought today uh, with a word that might, you, uh, if you were listening to those other two Sundays that we've shared, and as I've given grace and peace, uh, sometimes in our statements we add the word today that's a thought that we're going to present uh, to you. This may be a different passage that you've heard it from before, but it's truly there as you see uh, the thought today for today's message when you're looking there. Um, I'll give you a moment to find it. We are glad that you're joining us today that are that watch us and uh, support us and uh, watch our services we appreciate you uh, joining us if you'll take time and find that though Luke chapter 18 verse 9 to 14 we want you to read it through with us this is a very familiar passage or a section of uh, passages or scriptures or stories where Jesus shares parables and I should have said parables instead of stories but here is where Jesus gives several parables. Put in the middle of this, right in there in the area, right after the, the, the parable right before this deals with the widow. In verse 18, we're going to see today the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Some would be uh, remembering this as the parable of the Pharisee and the publican. And you might have been more familiar with it used as that term. But we will see this today, and a thought here that we give you, or the thought we'll give you, will be on mercy. Mercy. Maybe not the passage you think. We might could go to many of the words that Paul gives uh, in teaching to the church about mercy and mercy multiplied. But we see mercy in this passage today as we look at the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, or the publican. Hopefully you found that passage now, and you'll read it with us. Let's pray first today. Father God, thank you for the privilege to be here today. And Lord, as we look into your word today, what a word, what a thought. And many times as I share prayer, I'll say mercy extended to us. We're so thankful for your mercy. Lord, we see in this story that we'll share today, the mercy, your great mercy, that was extended, and it was about the prayer and the heartfelt desire. Lord, I pray that I'll properly uh, convey the message you've given to me today, and I pray it'll be a blessing to those that are here and those that are watching today. Lord, as we look into this special passage, bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be looking at um, Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. 
he would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Man, what a passage. What truths that are given there. Many, many years ago, the Lord has blessed uh, my ministry and, 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 and the, the opportunity to serve. And in that April time when God saved me at 16 years old and a few months later, he put a call in my life to be in some form of ministry. And my home church uh, made the, the decision to license, and then later, several years later, ordination came as that process continued on. But I remember uh, the pastor that we had was a, was a wonderful gentleman who loved to see young people, men and women, young men and women, uh, re react to the call that God put in their lives. I'm so thankful for that. And uh, he would use those things in training and help in the whole staff. And we were, in a, uh, were able to be a part of a pretty large church there in another area of the state. But I remember the investment that he wanted to have. And it wouldn't be turned over to someone else. And I remember one of my first sermons, actually my first sermon, I preached, and, and I'm getting to the point here, but one of my first sermons, and I had really forgotten it in preparing for this. I went back over some old notes and found some things. But one of my, fir my first sermon, I really stretched out the faith, folks, and I, I preached on Jesus wept. Now, we had a lot of fun in, in our Sunday school classes, as I shared before here, even in our church here, that many times when they would say, we want to have everybody memorize the scripture for next week. And all of us little uh, little 10-year-olds would come back, and we'd have some smart like in the group, get a dollar, and go, Jesus wept. And the teacher would okay, you learned it, you get a dollar. Well, when God gave me that opportunity, the preacher came to me, I was scared to death. I said, preacher, I can't, I'm not ready. I was like, I was like 16 and in my home church. And, and it took a little time and everything. And, and I said, well, he came back. He said, "Hey, look! If you're called, we got to we going to we got to use you." And so I gathered all that faith together and and preached on Jesus Web, and uh, I did. And 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 now I, I found notes to that sermon. And 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 my mother, bless her heart, she's in heaven today. Would keep all that and make those notes. But in preparation, within the third is about probably the third time. Uh, I preached on this passage and it was, but, but as God gave it to me for today, uh, I, and that message was not really about mercy. It was a whole different direction. And I guess as I prepared, I prayed today that it'll be a blessing. Maybe that I don't even remember because I was so nervous at 16 and 17. If I remember even what I said, but I did find written in, in one of my Bibles, that the notes there that that was done. So today you'll get a little bit of revisit to this passage, but the word of God always brings out things new, doesn't it? But as you see this situation today, I want you to see with this one thought, just the word mercy, because mercy is evident, isn't it? In this passage. And we could go several directions here. We could dwell on the thoughts of the Pharisee only. We could dwell on the position of the, publican or the tax collector only, but I want you to look at both of them as we're today looking at this with the thought of mercy. Now we see as Jesus has come to this passage, he said as he began, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Now that's, that is the definition or characteristic that we would have that Jesus dealt with of the religious leaders of that day. One of the things they would do is they were known for looking down because of 
of their righteousness and about the law and all the things that went with it. And Jesus said, they looked down on everyone else. Jesus had sensed this spirit and he told this parable, a story to teach a principle, a parable. He gave a parable to teach this. And he says this. Two men went up. Those two men he talks about, one of them being the Pharisee, one of them being the tax collector. And he gave the story as they came there of how they were going to pray and approach. Let's look at, uh, continue in verse number 9 here. They went up to the temple to pray. They went to the place of prayer. They headed for the right destination, didn't they? But if you read further in this story, they may have gone to the right destination, but they went there with the wrong motivation. And they went there with a spirit that one didn't compare to the other as you read the story further. The Pharisee went, he went himself and prayed. Now watch, just reading that prayer sends you a spirit of arrogancy. I am better. I am lifted up. But yet the tax collector prayed with a whole different nature. When we look at this story today and we think of mercy, and Jesus shared this parable, I want to give you three things in relationship to the comparison of these two men today. And we know that mercy was exhibited and given. Verse 9 and 10 shares with us today the reason for mercy. The reason for the need of mercy. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that the Lord, or that, no, sorry, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like I've sold test collector here, he didn't say it that, but like this tax collector. And he even mentioned this. I fast twice a week and got a tenth and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even, would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. The need was given there, wasn't it? The reason for mercy was there it was a need. Here were two that were coming to share a prayer of mercy upon them for salvation and for redemption. But the Pharisee spirit was all the righteousness or self-righteousness that he had. When he mentioned certain people that looked down, Jesus said certain of those that looked to their own righteous, Pharisees fell into that category. They trusted in themselves, and they looked down upon others that didn't trust them. They really despised those that didn't follow. Matter of fact, even in the two that were there, the Pharisee was bold enough to say, we just read it. He said, in a prayer, I'm thinking I'm not like other people. I'm not like the robbers and evildoers. Have you ever, you know, sometimes that happens in our churches, you know. It does happen, you know. And, 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 and it, we get to the point where sometimes say, have you ever heard this statement? Man, preacher, yeah, that was a good message. That was a good message on sin. That, they really needed that. He's saying, preacher, wait a minute, you're playing on words. No, those words mean motivation sometimes. Because when God, and I've been there when, when I've sat there, I was sharing the other day with an individual. And we were talking about some things that go on in church situations. And many people go with the idea that, well, I'm going to go and see what I get. But many times we should go and see what we can give. And I don't mean the spirit of money and all that kind of thing. I mean how you're in preparation to go to worship. And then you've heard this before. Well, I'm, going, I'm just going to find somewhere else. That preacher's not feeding me. Well, that happens. But at the same time, it's how are we looking when we're going into it. You said, those are saved people, Brother Mike. That's right. But here we look at someone living by the law that was so arrogant, even in the prayer, as he's talking to God, 
said, I am not like this tax collector. And then it said, I fast twice a week. And, attend. and that, was not, that was not the way fasting was to be handled. Fasting was a spiritual thing. Fast was not a thing to lift you up higher than another person spiritually. But yet, he wanted to make, bra make a bragging statement that he fasted and was in that position. And then, hey, you know where it was going. Look at what I give. Look at what I give. Which had nothing to do with the spiritual nature of this story. But the task collector stood at a distance. At a distance. Think about that. Just thinking of that thought at a distance gives me a thought of humility. You didn't have to be at a certain position. You didn't have to be at a certain place. You didn't have to be just this way to do it in works. You were just there to pray to God and know that you had a need. Two men here. Now don't miss this. Two men in this parable needed God. The Pharisee was not guaranteed by living by the law. Jesus was teaching this here. The tax collector had come and he had a need. Both the men in this story had a need. The publican, tax collector, Pharisee had a need. There was a reason for mercy extended. They had a need. Two men needed God. Two men came to the altar, didn't they? Will you agree with me about Scripture? But think of this. What was their response to the altar? Let that, let that sink in. The response to the altar was totally different. The Pharisee felt as if he was stepping to it and climbing and raising up in society all that he could do and all that he had done. And he stated it. But the publican, the task collector, who had the need, went in a very humble position and said he stayed at a distance. Didn't talk about all that he had achieved. But he said he would not even look up to heaven. So many times our examples of prayers and things we do, we go to a certain posture or a certain statement to put the words together where it pleases people. Task letter didn't do that, did he? He prayed a prayer and just simply asked. He didn't even look up to heaven. Have you ever seen that in a story? He didn't even look up to heaven. But he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. There are reasons today, I believe, and I think the scripture teaches this, of why there are so many situations now where I don't, we work and we share about conversion and about people trusting Christ and they come to a need and they know because we've created such a society that you must first know that you have a need. Many people will not want to look at the word that I am or the phrase that I am a sinner. But hear this preacher today. I am a sinner saved by grace. Amen. We are saved by grace. This publican prayed, and it was not about position. It was not about an elevation of words. He wouldn't even look up because he saw his need. There's a song that gives this simple title. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Praise the Lord for that. 
You see it in this story. Think of this. Think of that statement again. Two men needed God. Their response to the altar was the key. One came in pride. One came in humility. If you're watching today, or you're in our fellowship here, we can never take for granted. It's how you approach God. Come to Him in humility and ask for forgiveness. Number two, we see the redemption. Verse 11 to 13. Not only the reason we see here, but we see the redemption. God, I, I'm going to read part of verse 11. God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The redemption is seen here. The redemption. When you think of redemption, here's a definition to think about. Deliverance by the payment of a price. Deliverance by payment of a price. When we think of the redemption that occurred, this sinner that who had prayed, this publican who had said, have mercy on me, what would he be looking to? Is that redemption when we think of the redemption? It was going to be the redemption plan. Because as Jesus taught, he already knew that he was going to have to be going and dying on the cross to complete the redemptive plan. The price that was paid was not what the publican could raise up for his salvation. It was not what the righteous man here, or the appeared righteous man, the Pharisee, living by the law, could live up to. But it was the redemptive plan, and Jesus fulfilled that. Notice what it says. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me. The word mercy here says mercy is from merciful. Be merciful to me, a sinner. The merciful is a verb form. Now, where does it all go to? I'm going to quickly give this to you. When you think of mercy, we think of the comparison or the teaching from the Old Testament where we look at mercy and the mercy seat. The mercy seat sat on the top of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant contained the law. Where was the blood applied? When we look at the application of the blood, where was it applied? At the mercy seat. It was applied on the mercy seat and would make the covering. Man, isn't that wonderful teaching there? As that Old Testament principle is given, the blood that Jesus shed is applied for all sin. He died. His blood was shed for us. He cried. This sinner here, this publican cried. Have mercy on me. Be merciful to me, a sinner. He recognized his need. He said, hey, I have a need. Be merciful to me. I, I don't want, you know, sometimes we pray, yeah, oh, Lord, just give them what they deserve. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not the prayer. Because we deserve punishment. But by the grace of God and mercy, we have the opportunity of salvation because we deserve separation. But we are able to obtain salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the redemption, he was able to say then, or as we might say, one of the redeemed. John 8, 38, John chapter 8, Verse 36, a very familiar passage, says this, Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Is free indeed. And this publican, tax collector, who had said, Have mercy on me. Be merciful to me. In the spirit of humility. 
knowing that he was a sinner, was saved and wonderfully saved. And here is the result leading to that. The result is salvation. Verse number 14. Let's look here. I tell you that this man, now this is Jesus talking, my Bible has it in red. I like to say that every once in a while. Words written in red. I, I like to say that. My Bible has it here in red. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, was home, went home justified before God for those who exalt them. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Isn't that wonderful? This man, Jesus said, this man, rather than the other, went home justified. The result is justification. He came with the right spirit, the point of humility. A sinner knew his need and looked to God without a form or document, but just cry, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what it takes, and that's all it takes. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And the result was salvation. The result was justification. Don't miss it. It's a big word. But you're justified before God. Not only are you justified, you're exalted. Exalted. What it says here. Went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And for those who humble themselves will be exalted. What had occurred here? He had humbled himself, and then he was exalted. He was already in heavenly places. That position there was, he was exalted in Christ. Justified, exalted, forgiven. A part of mercy saying, be merciful to me. He came with that spirit. He came with that attitude. And he was forgiven. He was forgiven. And then the last thought under the result here being justification and salvation, justified, exalted, forgiven, and adopted. Man, I like that word. Adopted into the family of God. Adoption. You were strangers, but yet you were made into the family. You were placed into the family through what spiritual work had been done, not what as was prayed from the Pharisee. You were in him. You were adopted into the beloved. He was, by that spirit, justified, exalted, forgiven, and adopted. You see from the comparison of these two today, the Pharisee, by his own claim, did works, did good things, did the things that he felt would get uh, applauded among men and among the system of that day. And you saw the tax collector, the publican, who came there too. And many of the people then would think, hey, a tax collector can come like this? Because you remember even when Jesus said, we're going to go to the home of certain individual. And all the people thought, whoa, wait a minute. Was he a tax collector? They didn't have the greatest of popular view or in, in, among the society. But once they were changed, they were all the same to God, all the same to Jesus. Jesus said, we don't look at those categories of that. We're going to go. He had a disciple converted. You remember? He was a tax collector. Stunned some people. But that mercy reached that individual. In closing today, let's think of that word mercy. In this story, as Jesus gave the parable, he gave two individuals totally opposite, but yet with one common thing. They had a need. The Pharisee was wrong in spirit about meeting his need. The tax collector, the publican, was right where he needed to be. Thank God for the mercy of God. And if you're there and you're watching, 
turn to him in salvation. And as we live out, you say, I'm saved, Brother Mike. I'm a Christian. Let's live out that and let folks so and share with them the blessings that the mercy exhibited to us that we are and we fulfill the opportunity to give the testimony. I'm saved. I'm justified. But let's share that because there are many out there searching for the truth. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the privilege to share today. And God, we thank you, though this is a familiar story, I pray that this has been a blessing today. Lord, I'm so grateful for mercy exhibited to us. We thank you for the justification that we can have through you. Thank you for exalting us in those high places. Thank you for forgiveness. And Lord, thank you for making us a part of your family through your adoption. Adoption into your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you'll bless these words, Lord, and that reach and that the decisions will be made. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.